Uh, it's been cool though. Uh, a lot different than I thought it would be. Um, come from a small business background. I had my uh, own shop for since like 2006. Uh, it was a membership service for actors. We uh, produce web content and we help them with their social media. Um, that audience is very different than what you guys do, but um, I can relate definitely to the GMs more than any position because uh, I know what it's like to be responsible for everything. Uh, I have to worry about every little detail the store, sales, marketing, accounting, uh, cleaning, insurance, pretty much everything. So um, I do a lot of consulting as well, and the one thing that like every marketing person wants when I come in there is they're putting all these unrealistic expectations on the staff, like you have to put out a thousand tweets a week or a bunch of Instagram photos, I'm not going to do that. Um, but I am going to ask for one thing just to keep an open mind. Um, even if you leave here when I'm done and you don't remember anything at all, if you just think to yourself that it made sense what I'm saying, then we're in good shape. Um, also, I'm not going to, uh, like I said, put on any work to you guys next year, I think. I will be at all your stores. And I will be helping you guys come up with content, shooting content specific to who you guys are for your local area. So whatever we do in Denver is going to be completely different than what we do in San Francisco and so on. Um, the whole point is just to establish a voice in your area. So I'm going to start with uh, a video because it's entertaining and better than me talking, I think. So if I just hit play on this. Yeah. All right. So Sally, are you going to start first? You want me to start first? DJ and I and Sally are all going to be going to the NEC in Birmingham, England. And we would love to talk to you a little bit more about our tours, Route 66, Wild West, Canada, Yellowstone, Baja, and more. Uh, we've been there one time before, and we had a blast, and so we're going back, all right? The dates are... From the 19th of November till the 27th. We would love to see some of our riders there. We would love to get some new riders. So come see us, come hang out with us, and we'll have some fun. It's going to be a blast. We look forward to seeing you. Adios. Come on out. We're going to have a great time. Come see us. See you in Birmingham. I am Eagle Rider. So we'll uh, get to I am Eagle Rider in a bit. Um, but what's great about this video is this is a real, true, honest representation of who these guys are. How do you... Uh, the drum. You set the right button. Uh, okay, why social? Um, so instead of thinking that Eagle Rider just added a social media department, we should start thinking that all of Eagle Rider is a social media department. Uh, everything we do from sales to rentals to tours, uh, everything should be put on social. Um, everybody needs to be involved. Like I said, I'm not going to throw, expect you to do a ton of different work, but we do have to figure out how to incorporate you in some way. Um, marketing in the year that we live, uh, that's a big one. Um, this is the new television. Uh, Ten year, however many years ago, uh, when he just added color to TV. I mean, by ignoring this, it, it, uh, I said by ignoring this, we're literally ignoring millions of people. Um, who are we? Whose story are we telling? Um, everybody gets the storytelling is the new selling, but um, I think the, the mistake that a lot of people make is they make it about their story. Nobody really cares about what Eagle Rider's story is, but to keep people's attention, we have to figure out how to incorporate our story into their lives. Um, why would they pay for membership? I know that the product is really cool. Uh, I know that I can fit this into anybody else's life, but why is it that <coughs> they would pay, but why would they feel like they have to pay for it? You know, if this is like their car payment, their rent, their cell phone, those are things that they pay for because they need it. So social is a great way to get people to realize that they need this product more than anything else. Uh, oh, demographics of social. Um, I get that we do have a sweet spot. I think it's 40 to 55 is our demographic. Um, with social, I think there's only two that we need to worry about. Um, people that are interested in what we do and people that know somebody that's interested in what we do. Um, socials, the sharing capabilities are super easy. Um, the demographics are a little bit different. But um, I take a look at like my dad. When he takes cell phone pictures, he's a guy that uh, his finger is in every picture. But he posts that stuff anyway and he do doesn't care. Um, the point is, he has a built-up currency with his audience. Uh, people know who he is. He can post anything, and people are going to look past that finger, and they're going to see the context. They're going to see what he intended to do. 
So the intent primes overall, especially when it comes to social. Uh, these are the five platforms that I'm like uh, focusing on now. There's a lot more. New stuff comes out all the time. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, YouTube, and Snapchat, I think are the five places that we should live for the next 18 months. Um, I don't think we should invest any money in social ads in the beginning. I think organic is best. Um, the, uh, the reason why I think, probably the biggest reason why I don't think we should invest in ads yet is that a lot of people lie on social. They have like a different identity than they do in real life. So things that they like on Facebook probably aren't the areas that they like in real life. So if we're mark, you know, maybe geographical areas, yes, but if we're trying to target sports fans or whatever, they may not actually like those things. They might just like a page for whatever reason. Uh, Facebook, we'll start there. Um, I don't want to dog the stuff you guys used to do in the past. There's value in this ad. The problem is this ad is great to get someone's attention, but it's not going to keep it. I don't think any ad should have numbers or uh, price tags. Sounds cool, 89 bucks a day, I'm sold. But most people with a flyer, they throw it out. So this is the equivalent to a real flyer. I guarantee no one's ever held on to a flyer for more than like a week, you probably throw it out. I, know I do. Uh, Facebook, 1.7 billion users. Uh, it's a great way to build currency. Um, awareness first. Um, a good example of uh, building currency would be when I started my company, I used to charge 20 bucks a month and we went up uh, in price. And when my wife signed up, actually I met my wife, she signed up for 20 bucks a month and I charged her 200 a month by mistake. Well, she Googled me, looked me up on Yelp, found out, saw that there was uh, communication, there was transparency, she, you know, I had a built up currency with these people. Instead of calling the bank and filing a chargeback, which our customers can do, she called. She gave me the benefit of the doubt. So that's what's really great about Facebook. Some of the ads that are on, or some of the um, uh, complaints that are on Yelp and Facebook, I know they're not real. Most people can see past that stuff. Uh, Yelp is a devil. <laughs> um, there's really no way around it, but if you're transparent and you, have, and you use social to build awareness, people will give you the benefit of the doubt, I think. Um, this is an example of what I'm doing with Facebook. Um, an answer. Is that a model? Any models? Uh, Mar so this is the San Francisco page. Uh, who's the GM yeah, for San Francisco? There. Your picture will be there. So this is the uh, Chicks and Love Pizza Patio in San Fran. These guys don't have a huge social presence, but the people they do have really seem to like them. A lot of engagement. So what I do is I'm trying to build up your corporate stores. Um, with the general area. So I'm taking businesses that are using Facebook um, for their business to market themselves, putting it on our page. Tag them, they see it, they comment, you make me want to ride a motorcycle, this is great. So imagine if we take this a step further. I know we're away from this, but if we have every employee comment, like, or share this photo, all of a sudden we look like rock stars to that area. They're gonna go to the page and see, wow, who is the person responsible for this generosity? You're going to see Mario's face right there. Mario will be a rock star in that community. Does that make sense? Uh, YouTube. Oh, another thing with Facebook, too. Um, so most, I would say, like, you know, like billboards, commercials, radio ads, things like that, I don't want to say they're dying off, even email marketing. Um, but now social media really enhances that stuff. Way back when I started my company, I only had MySpace, Craigslist, and an email list. So what I wanted to do was build my email list in a way that um, wasn't really selling, but it was just you know providing value. My audience was actors. They're used to being sold all the time. And think about the emails you get now, most of them are probably spam. Um, so I think that all of you guys should have your own little email list just for your area. And you can do that, you build it from social, from the people that you meet in person. So what I used to do is I would go to a comedy show or a play or something I didn't want to go to, introduce myself and just really say, I want to see more of you. So this would be, this is something you guys could do when you get out of your stores. Really simple, I want to see more of you, where can I see you, get your email. I would email them the next day. Um, I'm hesitant to respond to emails quicker now because of Richard. But I do <laughs> check my email right away. It's because my phone is on me all the time, so I check. Whatever. So uh, <laughs> when I do send out emails, the subject line was always the same. So I wanted them to think of my name when I saw the email. Email said, much love, Valentino, every time. I did this for two years, grew my list at 20,000. My open rate was 84%. So 
So when they opened up that email, they saw my name, all they saw were two lines of text. If Dunkin' Donuts or Starbucks was giving away coffee, they knew about it. So every time I sent out an email, they're like, oh, that's got to be something that I'm getting for free because they saw Much Love Valentino there. So when Facebook came along, it was a really easy way for me just to build up my Facebook page and the rest of my social channels. I spent the time building currency with people I met. This technique you use in where you're incorporating other businesses in the, in the area, um, is this a proven tactic that you use in other companies? Uh, I've only done it with one other company. This is High Rise from Chicago. It's a Japanese company built this or uh, bought this high rise building. Um, they needed to sell. They wanted to um, you know just raise awareness for that building. They were targeting a very niche group. Uh, they didn't have any money for social. They just wanted a huge amount of people to see really quick. It was in the city. There's a lot of businesses around. Every business in the area uses Facebook. Most small businesses will use Facebook over a website because the traffic is already there. Think about when you invest in a website, not only do you have to build a website, but you got to go out and find people to go to it. With Facebook or any other social channels, the traffic's already built in. So it has, I mean, I've done it before, it's worked before. What um, results did you get? Well, they fill their building in less than a year. Uh, but again, some things aren't always going to work. We're going to try different things, different strategies. Every store will be different. You have to accept the fact that you will leave some kind of action on the table. What works for you guys probably won't work for what works in LA. We just have to really sit down and figure out what's going to work for you. And then more importantly, what you're going to be comfortable with. You know, some people are all about taking selfies all day and tweeting every detail of their life. I'm not like that. I don't I think it's weird. But some things, if you're comfortable doing that, it will work. Um, it really just comes down to thinking about those two, demogra two demographics. People that are into what we do and people that might know someone that are into what we do. All we have to do is be honest and transparent online. People see who we are. You see why we're doing it, they're going to be more interested. Um, the whole idea was social, and then by using your, your face there, uh, I really want to figure out a way to make the GMs a voice in that area. You know, so it's not like you're just promoting Eagle Rider, we're promoting Eagle Rider and every other company in that area. Nobody else does what we do. So we're not going to, uh, a cupcake store or a tanning salon isn't going to take business from us. But if we provide value by just promoting who we are in that area, people will see it. If they see it and they like it, they're going to buy it. Uh, YouTube. Uh, YouTube is, I think, the best one. Uh, it's really the only platform that you can get away with selling without being too invasive. Um, YouTube has one in seven people are on it, um, selling with story. And again, we're more of a media company. We're not just a motorcycle company anymore. Start thinking in terms of media. Um, a YouTube channel is comparable to a TV station. Think of NBC. They've got news, documentaries, commercials, movies, whatever. Um, they have all those different genres to attract a wide audience. We'll do the same thing with our YouTube channel. YouTube channel, you can break in a playlist. We have a playlist for rentals, a playlist for the sales department, a playlist for accounting. It really doesn't matter what it is as long as it's story driven and then have some kind of value behind it. Um, if you're just thinking about those two demographics, a lot of people will see it and they'll share it with people that might be interested in what we do. Uh, this is Russ. His nickname is Rock and Roll Russ. Uh, I think every salesperson should have some kind of web content they post every week. Um, it doesn't have to be as involved in this, as long as the, you, the, uh, the viewer knows what you're intending to do, as long as it's honest, um, and they're getting something out of it, they're going to watch it. Um, this is something we put together in 10 minutes, but uh, 2017, I'll be there, so I would love to do this for all you guys. <coughs> first Harley 20 years ago, got bit by the bug, and so when I got laid off from my last engineering job, I decided if I could do anything, what would I do? And it had to involve bikes, so I started selling bikes. 
on uh, bikes are my life. I love them. Um, here we're talking about the road glide, and I'll tell you a little bit about the road glide versus the street glide. The road glide has a fixed fairing, um, so it doesn't turn with the steering wheel. Also, all of the weight from the stereo, the amplifier, the speakers is not on the handlebars, so it turns easier. It also has the new six and a half inch infotainment center, which is pretty amazing. Um, not only does it have an awesome stereo with very low uh, total harmonic distortion, you can crank it up and it doesn't clip at all. Uh, also has automatic volume control, so when you've got it loud enough to hear on the road, but when you stop at a red light, you're not blaring out at everybody, the volume comes down. Start moving again, goes back up, pretty amazing. Um, also has built-in GPS from Garmin. And over here you can plug in your phone uh, into a USB port so that on the infotainment system you have access to all the contacts on your phone as well as all the music on your phone. All right, so another new feature on the uh, Mount Rushmore bikes that I personally like a lot is the new Easy Open Saddlebags. This one lever right there, you can even do it while you're sitting on the bike. If you've got your sunglasses, reach down in there, get them out, close the bag right back up. Uh, so finally, finally got done, got away with the, the old saddlebag latches that happen to be around like forever. Uh, another new feature on the 2015 Road Glide is the high output 103 motor. It is differentiated from the original 103. It is a higher output motor. It's got more torque, more uh, horsepower. Um, and the 103 is just a sweet motor. Uh, doesn't matter where you are in the throttle range, you hit the throttle, it's right there, it responds immediately, there's no delay. Great motor, Harley did a great job. Harley's uh, twin cam motor, uh, wooden twin cam motor, became number one in reliability with a score of 88 out of 100. Um, that was 2008, they're still number one. Uh, Yamaha recently came in close to the 87. Uh, prior to that, the closest was Honda with a 79, but Harley, the most reliable bike out there. So, these people that tell you, ah, uh, Harleys are shit, oops. <laughs> the people that tell you that Harleys are no good, uh, they're wrong. I mean, that's the best part, when you have up. Yeah, like, it doesn't have to be perfect. Like, what matters is what you intend it to do. So, if you know, your customers know that you're putting out a video to bring value to them, or they're getting something out of it, they're going to keep coming back and watching. Like, I really think that people know if they're going to buy something or not before they come in there. And now what's great about something like this is they know uh, who they're going to buy from before they even get there. This is a way to set up sales. Um, and it could be anything. It could be from your cell phone. But I promise you, in 2017, I'll be there to shoot stuff for you guys. Um, and then that will be when we can really come up with content that's going to be specific to you guys. And then you guys will be off and running on your own. Um, right now it's just me, but I really do think that you know a year from now we can have a social media manager in every store, and then that person can be in charge of just growing your brand local. Um, so, like I said, even if most of the stuff you forget when I leave, um, as long as it makes some kind of sense to you, and you know that I'm going to be there to help, we'll be in good shape. Uh, Snapchat, I love this one the best. Um, it started out as like something for like 13 year old girls. Uh, now it's I mean, I'm on it every day. Me and Eric, Eric is my Snapchat best friend. Um, what's that? <laughs> my wife loves that about uh, What I like about Snapchat is that they figured out a way to get you to, to force you to pay attention. Like with a tweet, Facebook, Instagram, whatever, you can look at it later. You can tab it, look at it later, but with Snapchat, you have to pay attention. But the value is the second time you watch it. You watch it once, it's interesting, you can watch it again. Sometimes your brain takes a couple seconds to catch up to your eyes. The second time you watch it, you know you're gonna pay attention to the whole thing. 10 second video. People say that there's no value because there's no clock out feature, you can't see what the metrics are, you don't know who's watching it. But the, goal, the, uh, the value of Snapchat is there's 100 million users on it, and if you've got 1,000 people in your feed, you know at least 900 of them are watching your content all the time. Uh, Van, these are a couple companies that have definitely benefited from Snapchat. Uh, this is, I think, in the first three years of using it. 32 million for Vans, 165 for Gatorade. Uh, mac and cheese, 28 million people because of Snapchat. So, these are examples of Snapchat videos. Um, life. Movie trailer, 10 seconds. If you're a, uh, if you're a
Ryan Reynolds fan? I see it. Maybe. That might be enough for you to, to go see it. Uh, the next two. These are examples of things that probably aren't the best. Um, CNN, like most like new companies, or most like old school companies, are taking social and trying to figure out a way to bring people back to old technology. It'd be like taking your color TV away and giving you a bullshit black and white TV. It doesn't work. These are not Snapchat videos. These are something that they're using as a way to get people to watch the news again. Uh, same with CNN. Uh, They think by staring at the CNN logo, that's going to make you want to watch it. So, it doesn't work. Uh, Instagram, um, hash, or hashtags, you guys know what hashtags are? Obviously, uh, gateway to relationships is a great way to build your social presence. Uh, photos need to be perfect. Uh, what I mean by that is the quality has to be perfect. Um, it does, I mean, I'm sorry, the, uh, the message has to be perfect. Right now, I'm using Shutterstock pictures just because you know, I have to manage my time and there's like, a lot of platforms that I'm using right now. So I'm taking the same approach that I'm doing with Facebook. Finding Instagram accounts that have high follower accounts. Uh, finding small business that uses Instagram as well. Uh, piggybacking off their marketing and getting their, their, uh, their fans to see us. Um, the quality does matter, but it's more about the message itself. Think about the finger picture. People will look past the finger if the message is strong. Uh, this is what you guys used to post. Again, like not the dog, what you guys did before, there's nothing wrong with this. I mean, it's... Looks good, looks fun, I'll go to that. But it's a flyer. You're gonna throw it out, you're gonna forget about it. Um, the 2543, it's not that expensive for this, but somebody that doesn't know, they're gonna see 2,500 bucks and think, forget it. This um, is what I've been posting uh, recently. Um, some people look at this and think, oh, it's a sexy girl. It's not, it's, it's 2016. It's uh, women empowerment. It's, uh, honesty, transparency, work ethic. Um, this is a photo that's gotten more interaction than anything that we've ever posted before, uh, in, even including the ones that we paid for. What you want is engagement. You know, it's better to have more, or, you know, a low follower count and more engagement than the other way around. Um, you'll hear like marketing experts talk about bottom line numbers and how you have a high follower count or more followers than people you follow. It's a total bullshit thing. It's just a way to sell those stupid courses. Uh, like my Instagram only has like 500. Some people laugh at that. All 500 pay me every month. So I would much rather have a low follower account and have them all pay me than have someone just watch me like here. That's why I'll tell you that. Sorry. No, 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 go ahead. Um, so uh, this is new, obviously. So um, how does, so that picture that you posted, mm -hmm. what, how does that benefit? What is, what is that photo doing? So that photo, uh, it was in the description. So in the description, I put something about just like working hard, going for it. I okay. um, think it was like a I'm with her 2016 thing. Um, I try to stay away from politics and religion on social because people are sensitive, but that picture at that time was relevant to a stuff in the news with I'm with her on the hashtag. It was just a way to get people to see it. Oh, that but, wasn't actually like for evil right? Oh, that was on our eagle rock. Oh, yeah. It was just a way to bring awareness to our product. So, um, female demographic is definitely a demographic that you know, there's room for us to sell to. That picture would be something that I think would be attractive to that demographic, opposed to the flyer. It really just gets people's attention. So, the photo was just to bring mm -hmm. eyes to our page. That's it. And sometimes, I mean, there's like a, um, I posted something somewhere for like a, one of those health clubs, it's like a private gym. That picture was from there. It got people uh, interested. It got people talking. There's more engagement, and then all of a sudden, our name shows up in front of all their customers as well. Because most of the Instagram accounts I've been promoting are small local businesses in our area. Right. Uh, old Twitter again. Like, there's nothing wrong with this, but it's 2016. This is probably isn't the. It's a cool photo. Beautiful girl. Great bike. But they could have done this more justice with the video. Maybe start at her face, pan out, and then see her in the bikini. Um, this is something that we retweeted. Not a lot of engagement. Um, again, it's just, it looks like everybody else's stuff. This is what I've been doing with Twitter. Basically, uh, just focus on engagement. Like there's so much, uh, Twitter, like there's so much noise on social. So many people are talking at the same time. Um, I've been using Sprout Social. It's a CRM program to manage our social effectively, see who's talking about what. Uh, the motorcycle safety course is a hashtag that gets a lot of attention. 
So I put that in there, and when people mention that, I find I see all the responses. So every day there's at least five or six hundred people that talk about that hashtag. I think 90 something percent of the people who take that class don't have a bike license yet, so you know they're thinking about it. So instead of sending them a flyer, or sending them some kind of advertisement about a tour, I just talk to them, just engage. Uh, Twitter is great just for listening. You know, it's like being at a party of a thousand people talking at once, just listen, see what everybody's talking about, and then respond when you need to. Um, I should have let this go a little bit longer. We had more of a conversation, but I had to print it out soon. Uh, Harley, um, I've been definitely obsessed with Harley's uh, marketing content since like 2009. Um, they've definitely reinvented themselves a bunch of different ways. The Live Your Legend campaign is like the new thing they're doing now. Um, I really think that th aside from the crappy name, the, this campaign that they're doing, I really think it's going to set them up for forever. Um, if you take a look at all the stuff they've done in the past, this is definitely by far better than all of them. They, they, they uh, definitely um, attract a different audience. Uh, they're not so narrow anymore. Um, this is where they used to be. Um, there's nothing wrong with this video. The people in it, it sounds fun. I mean, watching this video, I want to be there with them. It, sounds, it looks awesome, but this isn't the content in 2016 that's going to attract more of a customer base than we already have. Um, and this was only three years ago, so.
a little cheesy, but I mean, it looks like a good time. I just don't think that's like the kind of content for 2016 that is really gonna sell and buy. It's actually not gonna sell what we do. And now, only three years later, this is what they do now. Um, it's not that long. I wanna watch all of them because each one is great. Uh, and this is Two wheels. Stuff that we can do. A little time to cut loose. And some buddies who have your back no matter what. Remember those adventures? Maybe it's time to make some new ones. Introducing the new Roadster. Live your legend. My name's Josh Martinez. I ride a 06 Dyna Street Bob and a 15 Road Glide. Not growing up with motorcycles, it kind of motivates you to try harder than everyone else. I think it makes me more of a go-getter. At the end of the day, I don't want my family to remember what type of house I lived in, the type of car I drove. I want them to know that I rode a motorcycle, and not just a motorcycle, I rode a Harley. If someone were to come up to me and say that they wanted to ride, I would just simply tell them, go out there, go get it. Your life story is more than the things you do. Story built on the moments you made today and the impact you have on others. How big is your story going to be? Live your legend. I'm Krista Lawson. I'm from Pensacola, Florida, and I ride a Sportster Iron 883. I started writing because it was basically a tradition passed down from my prior generations. Harley definitely symbolized a relationship with my dad when I was younger, and now it's just kind of expanded beyond that. And I hope to inspire other people to live beyond their boundaries and live a life that's worth living. You have the choice to do what it is you want to do in this lifetime. And you can create your own story and live your own legend. My name is Jamie Weller and I ride a 1200 Custom. I never rode motorcycles as a kid. My mom wouldn't let me and then I got married and my wife wouldn't let me. <laughs> last year my dad asked me to do a father-son's bride. I ended up talking to my wife. She said, well, how do you say no to that? It just so happened that Harley was offering the Veterans Ride free, so I was able to get my endorsement through their program. I got my bike, and right now I'm just short little rides here and there to get the experience to go on a father-son ride with my dad. I would like my legacy to be having my son and my daughter want to do something like that with me. People say they're going to live out their dreams one day. By one day, they usually mean when their kids are grown up. If you wait until then, your kids will miss the lesson. Live your legend. So the only reason why I'm showing Harley videos is it's not like I'm not competitor obsessed, I mean a little bit with Harley, but you know, more your customer obsessed. A video like this definitely reaches a lot of people. Um, the power, I mean, social, there's so many different things you can do, like the sky's the limit. I know we do, I mean, I'm still new, so I'm trying to figure out a lot of different things to operate, but as far as like when somebody comes in to rent a bike, there are those times where the bike of choice isn't available. Like, who, like I'm an easy customer, I don't give a shit, I just want to ride, it doesn't matter, but if they see who you are and they see you guys in your element and there's content showing you do your job, they're going to appreciate you more. They're going to know how hard you're working and they're not going to be such dicks online about it. They're going to say, okay, fine. This guy's doing a good job. This girl's doing whatever he can. They're going to take the bike. Um, with Harley, I mean, their sales are down a lot. They have a ton of leftover bikes. I mean, who knows? We can be pushing content so much with you guys. They probably, I mean, they're in a the business to sell bikes. So they know that somebody's more likely to buy a bike that they rent 
a whole week as opposed to just test drive one. So that might be a way for us to get more bikes, I mean, who knows? But the idea is just to keep putting out content, and not worry about uh, thinking about who we're targeting who. Yeah, next year that'll be different. Um, blogging, uh, I think we're sending out an email on Friday. You guys are gonna be required to write one blog a month, 500 words or less on what it's like to be a GM. Joke. <laughs> <laughs> but again, it's like, you know, blogs are not, they are kind of a pain, you know, like I don't like doing them, but um, it's a really great way to re, uh, re engineer a message. So let's say we're selling like an affliction shirt or rentals or something. Um, instead of just putting out an article that says, hey, we sell affliction shirts, rent a bike. Um, figure out a way to talk about the shirt. You know, like maybe you've got a friend who's, I mean, this is a probably an extreme case, but you've got a friend who's sick in a hospital and his favorite uh, thing to do is watch UFC and he wants an affliction shirt. So you bring him that shirt. You don't have to talk about the shirt in the article. You talk about your friend and what you did for him and how the shirt made him feel better. That's a more effective way to sell apparel than just posting a, a flyer. Um, Keep time in mind, right now I'm using uh, medium.com. Uh, I wrote a couple blogs for some of you guys already just to get started. Uh, medium's great because you're saving people time. Um, they can read on their phone. You, you know going in that an article can only be a minute or two minutes. I don't want to read like a 45 minute blog. Um, you think, think about like for the past like 50 years, companies have spent, been spending millions of dollars interrupting us. Watching TV, commercial comes on. Reading an article, a, a banner ad pops up. Like when's the last time you clicked on a banner? It's annoying. If I'm driving home and sitting in traffic and I got a 15 minute commercial block, your commercial block brake pass is not gonna wanna make me buy brake pass. It's gonna make me never wanna buy brake pass. So the great thing about social is that you can reverse engineer your message that's not invasive, not too salesy, and it's gonna keep their attention. Ads and sales and numbers, it gets their attention once, but it's not ever gonna keep it because if we put out a flyer that's 10% off, the competition's gonna put one out that's 15% off. And then you're gonna put one out that's another 10% off. It doesn't work. Uh, influencer, uh, you guys know what influencers are, right? Social influencers, you know, they get paid a really decent amount of money to promote a project on, or to promote a product on their social media channels. Um, I don't think these are ever worth the investment. I mean, people, look, people think of an influencer as a different thing. I think you guys are the influencer, not some social person. Um, an influencer is a watered down celebrity. You take a look at like, uh, what's her name? The lady married to Michael Douglas. She's a T-Mobile spokesperson. Yeah, I, I, great. Her using a, a T-Mobile phone is not gonna make me wanna sign up with T-Mobile. I'm sure she has rise or another one is better. She's getting paid. So you know there's no emotional investment in that product for her. Um, the ROI is never worth the money because you can't track it. Most of these people will just say, hey, check out this phone, and that's really it. Uh, it's pretty much short, it's a shortcut. Um, here is, a, we're not gonna watch this whole video because it's painful, but this guy. Warning. This video contains super awesome content, not suitable for people who don't enjoy super awesomeness. Hate them already. Viewer discretion <laughs> fine. <laughs> this dude makes like 2,500 bucks a month, just from this one. This guy probably has a ton of other clients, he does, this is it. So somebody chop one and over. This is all he does. <laughs> But this company. Yeah, what's up, everyone? Oh, he's annoying. Oh, no, no. I'll edit it out. <laughs> <laughs> no, we could have got one like two months ago, but she wanted health insurance. She's not very responsible. Um, so, the problem with that last influencer is let's say there's two motorcycle influencers, there's a good chance that they both have the same audience. The same people are watching him that are watching the other guy. So what is about that video that's gonna make you buy? Like nothing, there's no investment from that person. He doesn't know about our company, he doesn't know about that product. He's not gonna be able to sell. I've only been here seven weeks and I know that I can sell Eagle Rider to anybody. It's a great product, we've got a lot to offer. So somebody like Sally or you guys who know the product, you're invested in the product, you guys should be getting the free content. You guys should be getting the product. So if you invest your time in social, just put a little bit into it, there's no reason why you can't spend the weekend riding in India. Uh, I know Sally, uh, Sally Case works in tours. She, uh, she wants an Indian scout. Um, 
This video, when we posted, got more engagement than most any other video that we posted. She knows who these people are. Uh, they trust her. So when she goes out and she puts a review about a Scout or a Harley, her word is going to be more valuable than that guy that we just saw. And down the set. <laughs> Sally is YouTube gold. I'm Sally Case. I'm a tour booking agent here at Eagle Rider, and I think I have one of the most exciting jobs because I talk to people all over the world whose dream it is to come here and ride a motorcycle. I talk to people from Australia to New Zealand to Iceland and the UK, and they have the dream of coming here to ride. They are a little bit nervous because they've thought about doing this forever, and it's the iconic Route 66. It's what they've dreamed of their whole life. I'm the person they come to for the details and to feel a little more comfortable with the idea because it is, it's a huge deal to do this. So I like to be the face of the company and to calm their nerves a little bit and get them prepared for the trip of a lifetime. A little video like this, it's not, uh, it's not Harley quality. Those Harley videos were, man, they spent over a hundred million bucks on that campaign. So, but it's not like we're competing with them. We can piggyback off everything they do. We can target people that are interested in Harley. These videos, I think, I'm biased because I made them, but uh, this, is a, this is who Sally is. People know who she is. Every time people come back for a tour, they leave for a tour, the smile on their face is unbelievable. I saw this French guy and a German guy talking to each other at a party. They didn't have a clue what the hell they were saying to each other. And they were smiling at the time. So that message, that experience, that feeling, that's what we put on social. And the best people to do that are you. And the only way that we can really get to a point where we're pushing content for you guys is just to test stuff out, just to try. So another couple things to keep in mind before we end is you're not gonna be alone. I'll do it for you. Um, I'm gonna help you do it. You just have to keep an open mind. Um, a lot of, it might take a few months to figure out what's gonna work for you. You might put out blogs and video and Snapchats. Nothing will work. You might find that uh, Pinterest, of all things, might be the platform for you. There's so many different platforms out there. We just gotta figure out what's best for you and figure out what's gonna work for you guys. Um, it probably is gonna work with just you because you're obviously super busy. Uh, but there's gotta be somebody in your store that can spare five minutes a day. Like, think of this person as a social ambassador. Uh, even if it's somebody just works at the front desk. Somebody, if you just give them that responsibility to run Twitter, Instagram, one of the platforms, they will feel like it brings more value to their job. They will do more and you definitely will see bigger results if you give somebody that added responsibility. And this is somebody that you guys will have to work with on a daily basis, I will. So I have webinars set up for these guys. I have a ton of things that we're gonna try out. Hmm? Oh, with the webinar, so these are things that I'm working with the franchise in Australia right now. Um, just trying to figure out how uh, best to market their area. Uh, they're tough. I'm not there, so I'm just hearing like, you know, talk, but um, they see the value in it, and uh, it's working what they're doing. We're trying to figure out a way to get people in their store and to grow their social presence through people they meet in person. Um, I think that's the best way to go. It's harder, but something like the, the pizza shop one, so when I do go to San Fran, I will go to their store, introduce myself. Hi, I'm Mike, I work at Eagle Rider. Come over, and then that's a really great way to build your social presence with people that you know. Um, questions? So Harley doesn't do it as much, but other companies do. They'll take a Facebook post and they'll put it on YouTube, they'll put the same content on Instagram, Snapchat. They don't really respect that platform for what it's there for. Um, people go to these platforms for a reason. There's different audiences in each of them. So it's okay to use Facebook as a distribution channel to get your other platforms out there, but as far as like the amount of content that you put and the engagement, it's different. I mean, it depends on, like I put something on the Los Angeles page, there's always people to comment. Um, but I think you can post every day, um, several times a day. I don't think it's limiting yourself. I mean, if you do one a week, 
it's fine as long as people are engaging it doesn't matter um, but using hashtags tagging people if you're just new to your pages and there's not that much engagement on it it's going to take a lot you might have to post 20 different things just to get one person to post or just to get one person to comment but you know that one person would be the tipping point that's why i go after the businesses because they have people that already invested in them they have built up currency with that area so I know that if I'm promoting that pizza shop, there's 500 people that could potentially see something if they start to engage. But they're more likely to engage if, let's say, everyone in the company were to comment, like, or share that same post, we're more likely to get the exposure. I said the F word? Only one Our Huh? Our So, but Yeah, like, I turned around. Mike, what you're asking me that.